to another expert interview uh, on the subject. Uh, and this month's uh, subject is sales training. I'm joined by Bruce Wedderburn from Integrity Selling. Morning, Bruce. Uh, good morning, John. How are you? Good, good. And uh, just as a, a disclaimer, Bruce and I go back uh, a long ways. We worked together at a previous training company, Hothwig, many years ago now. And Bruce right. is now the chief sales officer, uh, as I said, at Integrity Selling. And today I wanted to talk to Bruce about the art of the sales conversation, because this, uh, as we were talking just off air, this is where Integrity really uh, focuses, right? Yeah, correct. It's right. You know, we have looked at Integrity Solutions now for the organization for 35, 37 years on that conversation, not just in three areas, not just in sales, but also in customer service and also in the coaching domain as well, and how to really maximize the impact and the results from those conversations. So when you, when you mention, uh, when you talk about sales conversation, what, what really are you talking about? Yeah, great question, John, because it is one of the most misunderstood aspects of selling, but not just selling in all areas of human communication as well. Um, because you mentioned sales training is the subject here. So well, let's, let's drill down on sales training, but it does apply to other aspects of communication. And that a lot of the training, in fact, the vast majority of the training that's out there now in selling is focused around the conversation between the salesperson and the customer. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's absolutely essential. We really to really to maximize that. But we found that it's only, that's only one of three separate conversations that are critically important to success. So you've got the conversation with the customer. Right. Yes, that's great. But the second one is one that is overlooked and it is just as important. And I'll tell you a little bit about some research that was done just recently by the Sales Management Association, which indicates that it's more important than the conversation with the customer. And that's the conversation that the salesperson has with themselves. Mm. Interesting. With himself or herself. And the third, the third conversation, which is absolutely critical and is also frequently overlooked, is the conversation the salesperson has with her or his coach. Mm. Those three need to work together. And if they do, then we're going to start seeing elevated sales results, longevity in performance, those types of things. And then it translates into some very tangible metrics in organizations. But most sales training is missing the boat. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why. So that's an interesting. So let's let's hit, hit number two there, because I think that's the one that most people are going to be surprised about is the the sales conversation the salesperson has with themselves. So expand a little bit on that. Yeah, it's it's um, interesting when you think about that. It's like one area that's really bubbling to the top in terms of, of some of the research that's been done lately is this area called achievement drive. An achievement drive is an energy that gets released when a person has absolute clarity around their goals, has a sense of purpose towards achieving something, and feels that they have goals that they can actually realistically achieve. And that is really the, 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 the turbocharger of everything else that somebody in sales does. I mentioned a little bit earlier about it, some research that we did with the Sales Management Association in partnership with them where we looked at this subject of what is it that makes a salesperson consistently successful. Right. So, and we've all been there, John, you've mm -hmm. hired, I've hired them. You hire two salespeople, both have similar backgrounds, both have similar territories. They're selling the same product. They've got a similar customer base, but over time one goes on to become extremely successful. The other one just sort of gets along. Okay. And maybe even Peter's out. Why is that? And we really wanted to get beneath the surface and find out and answer that question because it's something that's been puzzling for sales leaders for, for eternity. Right. Um, so we, we, we asked the question to over 200 organizations and the sales leaders in those organizations as to what is it that makes your consistent performers uh, successful? Is it their product knowledge and their selling skills? Or is it more their self-belief, their mm -hmm. attitude, their confidence, their, their drive to achieve? Uh, and we found that the answers were 84% of organizations came back and said, 
achievement drive is mm. as important, if not more important, than product knowledge or selling skills. So, do so, you, so a, a, a very surprising result there. Yeah. So do you um, do you believe that there are say salespeople out there that maybe they're going along fine in the in the sales process, but because they don't have that conversation with them, oh, they don't have that achievement drive, that they that they don't have the confidence to get the sale over the line, that maybe they lose sales that somebody with a greater sense of confidence or achievement drive would, would bring home. Yeah, it, it is a case of losing sales. And think about where that conversation with yourself plays off. It plays, it, 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 the, the byproduct of that is in this area of confidence, mm -hmm. is this area of drive. It is, do I want to pick up that phone and call that person? Do I want to ask for that sale one more time? Um, do I want to put myself out there and put my self-esteem out there mm -hmm. um, again? And that's where the, the, the concept of achievement drive or the conversation we have about with ourselves comes in. I, I mentioned that 84% of organizations said it was as important, if not more important than product knowledge and selling skills. But here's an interesting part, John. Um, when we ask how many of those organizations are training people on that, only 26% of organizations <laughs> said they did a good job of doing that. Right. So, and so, 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 so a huge gap there. We've got... We've got organizations are saying this subject mm -hmm. is absolutely critical for, for success, but we're not training anybody on it, really. <laughs> Only about a quarter are, are doing an effective job in that area. So a huge delta out there. Yeah. But, but, here, but here's an interesting part, John, that surprised us and that came out of the research. Those organizations that said, yeah, we do do a good job of training people on the more attitudinal things like achievement, drive, and goal setting, mm -hmm. self-belief. Those organizations who did that outperformed the organizations right. who said they don't do that by over 20% in sales results. So there's some very tangible, measurable revenue that comes along associated with this previously considered soft area. So I'm sure you get this question all the time, right? Um, you know, when you're engaging with prospects and customers around this area. And that is, some people listening to this would say, okay, achievement drive, I get it, you know, confidence, I get it. But that's not something you can teach. You either have that or you don't have that, right? So what's your answer to that? Can you actually teach achievement drive? Yeah, it, everybody has it. Everybody has it about something, but it's in varying degrees. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes into sales because they want to do something, want to achieve something, they want to make a difference to the world, they want to make a difference to their clients or they want to make a difference to their bank balance and their commission check or, or, or what that buys for them in their lives. So everyone has goals to start with. Um, so we, can, we don't necessarily focus on teaching achievement drive or, because people have got it. It is how do you create an environment in your organization where that achievement drive gets released, where it starts to get elevated, where people start to find a greater sense of purpose about what they do. It's not just selling stuff. We're actually making a difference in the world. Um, and they're setting goals that are working with their manager in a coaching capacity to set goals that are motivating for themselves personally. You know, we were working with an organization recently and the, the, the manager was saying, I, I, I just can't get my salespeople excited. There's just not a sense of energy in our mm -hmm. organization here compared to other companies that, that he's been visiting. And... Um, we, we asked a little bit about what sort of goals the salespeople have. He said, well, they've got their quota. And every salesperson, nearly every salesperson has a quota, but mm -hmm. some people, they get fired up about that because they, they've joined the dots in their own mind what they're achieving that quota does. But there's okay. others who are like, that's for the company. Gotcha. Not what is it for me? And so helping join those dots, it's a critical role and in, in training can do that. Um, we've seen that in the work that we've done with salespeople and with organizations to really just create light that fire under people and get them out there doing the things that they know they should do, but they don't necessarily do them. And working with managers to be able to help coach to those things, because that, that's a critical part of mm -hmm. it, John. Yeah, well, we always, I mean, and we've talked a lot in the past, um, you know, you and I about managers and getting managers engaged. And I've talked to other people recently uh, on some of these interviews. But I want to flip it over for a moment and get back to what you just mentioned about 
salespeople themselves, right? Because we're always saying, well, the sales manager needs to coach them. He needs to do this, needs to do that. Well, what do what do salespeople need to do for themselves? Because I always feel like there's a certain uh, section of people who are always waiting for something to external, right? For my yeah. manager to do something, for the company to do something. What are some of the things that individual salespeople can do to you know, get unleash that achievement drive, you know, gain more confidence, be more in control of their own goals or whatever? Yeah, and that that's a great question because here's why that's a very timely question, I think, mm -hmm. John, and very insightful because one of the big trends now is about this thing called employee engagement. Right. You've heard it, we've heard mm -hmm. it, and it's very important when we support that and we work with organizations to help them increase employee engagement. A lot of the focus of employee, the popular thinking of employee engagement is, well, what do managers have to do to be able to um, keep employees uh, motivated, to keep them to keep them uh, from, from leaving, um, especially a, appropriate for millennials as well, who have a whole, all different sets of expectations and hate mm -hmm. to stereotype, but that's the types of popular thinking that's out there. But I think the pendulum is starting to swing a little bit back towards exactly what you said, which is, all right, that's great that the managers and the leadership and the organization is doing all of these things for you. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. So your question is a good one. And here's a couple of things that when we talk to organizations about uh, that sales could, salespeople can be doing. But number one is take responsibility for your own success and your own performance and your own happiness at work mm -hmm. um, versus waiting for my manager or my CEO or the business environment to give those things to me. Right. Recognize that you're responsible for your happiness. Uh, number two would be set some goals for yourselves as well, in addition to the, what your manager's doing. Number three, look at your manager as a collaborator, someone who's there to work with you on your success. Number four, invest in your own skills. Get better at doing what you do and you will get better results. You get better results in sales. You sell more, you make more. Life is always better when people are selling more. It yeah. solves a lot of problems. Yeah, ab absolutely. So that's a, there's a couple of interesting things in there, right? So, um, what would you? How would you advise a a salesperson if they? Okay, so they have their quota. They're looking at the the months ahead. Pipeline doesn't look great. They're losing confidence. What are a couple of things you would advise that person to do to at least set themselves up to be more successful? Yeah. First, first thing is they need to be a very aware of there's not one, but three conversations. Mm -hmm. So that awareness that that's going on in and of itself will, can be a breakthrough for them. And each one of those three conversations is contributing to their success. Number two, building on that awareness is working on how can I get, how can I get better at each one of those? So when thinking about the conversation I'm going to go out and have with customers, I may not be as a salesperson getting the types of results that I want. What do I need to do better in the conversations with customers? And here's one thing that continues coming out on all the latest research because all of us, John, are just besieged with information sure. every day. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, with all the noise that's coming out of the Internet with the, the blogs and the interviews like this and things like that are happening out there. It's just the waves of information crashing on people's speech every day. So what are clients who are bombarded with opinions and research and data and directions and things that what do they want more than anything now? They want clarity. Yep. They want to be able to simplicity and clarity. So if you're a salesperson, and you're thinking, what do I need to work on to get better at my conversations with my customers? Get better at helping them get clear. Mm -hmm. Get better at clarity. Yeah. Helping them understand what's the problem they're trying to solve. What does success look like? What's the downside if they don't solve that problem? Mm -hmm. what's the upside if they do, and how do you measure it? Focus on that conversation. Yeah. And that in and of itself will get you a better outcome. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Um, and that's exactly the same thing that we see. And I, I have my conversations with other people is is that I mean, remember a number of years ago, Bruce, we talked a lot about, you know, the buyer focus on the buyer and, the, you know, the buyer is more yes. informed than ever they were before. And which was which is great. You know, we like we all like to be informed buyers. But over as the years have gone on, as you say, we're deluged with information. And then on top of that, we're deluged with people telling us they can solve all of these problems and even problems that we're not even sure that we need to solve. And so the paralysis sets in. I think decision paralysis has become one of the biggest factors in selling. We talked about it before. You remember years ago that your your biggest competitor may be indecision or no mm -hmm. decision. So how how does a salesperson in those conversations with the customer become that beacon of clarity, that person who can help the, the, the buyer say, yes, this is the problem I need to solve? Yeah, well, because, John, one of the reasons that, that one of the outcomes of all that complexity is, is probably two things, one being that there's more buyers involved in the decision right. than ever before, mm -hmm. especially in a B2B decision. Um, it, it, it was what it's, uh, um, CEB was 5.2 and now they're up to 7.4 and it's something it's only over a, a two or three year period and it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty soon. It used to be a decision making team and now it's a decision making army <laughs> um, that's involved. And, and so because people are, are less likely to go out on a limb and make that recommendation without getting all of this consensus behind them. So. So that's one of the major changes that all these buyers are coming in. Well, if you've got more people there and you've got to coordinate with more sellers and you've got to get on people's calendars and schedules and things, well, it's only natural that what's a decision that should have taken three months is now taking six yeah. months. So what can salespeople do to navigate through that type of thing? First of all, help the customer navigate through it. Right. Because many times we've, we've found that we will ask a customer, if you go back 10 years um, and ask a customer, what's, what's the decision making process here? Mm -hmm. She would be able to say, well, oh, well there's this, then this, and often sometimes lay out three or four steps. Now, many times they're going, I, I don't know. Right. I don't know what our decision making process because there's so many people involved in it as this decision making army. So helping the buyer get clear about what's going on inside their own organization uh, would be something that buyers would see as incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. Helping them get clear around why are we even doing this? And it's amazing, John, you may have seen this, how many times you get through a lengthy sales cycle, you've had meetings and there's been proposals and, and there's committees and, 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 and procurement gets in and after a while, this has been going a while, someone <laughs> on the buying side says, Remind me again why we're doing this. What yeah. problem are we trying to solve? And if the person who asked that looks around the table and doesn't get clarity, then you've got a sales cycle that's gone from six months to maybe 12 months to maybe never. Yeah, to maybe never. Yeah, we had. A, a, I came across an instance quite recently actually where there was huge urgency early in the sales process and as the sales process went through what you're talking about here and got longer and longer, um, the urgency dissipated. Yeah. And I yeah. think and I think that's that's exactly what you're talking about is because I think they forgot as they went through the process, I think they forgot what what the drivers were in the first place. And so I think then as a sales um so getting back to what we were talking about, I think as a salesperson, right, you have to have the confidence and the drive to almost go back and remind them, say, oh, you know, let's back up a little bit here. Here is why you wanted to do this in the first place. Has that changed? I mean, has that issue been solved? Has yeah. that gone away? That's a great point. Mm -hmm. And it's it it is goes back to that point around clarity, helping them. They, you may have been able to help them achieve some clarity around the problems they're trying to get away from and the outcomes that they're trying to achieve. And that was very clear in their mind two months ago. Mm -hmm. But they've been bombarded by information and noise and priorities and what was number two on their list of priorities has slipped down to number five and other people have gone and involved in the team and the two people have left the company and <laughs> they've gone. And, and so suddenly the ability to go back and reconnect them to that purpose that's a critical selling skill but we've got to be able to get it in the first place mm -hmm. 
And so many salespeople that will will assume that they know they've been in the business a long time. This is how everyone has always done it. Or right. they'll ask a question or two to uncover the needs of the customer, um, but without really finding out what's the customer moving away from, what are they moving towards, and, and what's the value of, of narrowing that gap. Mm -hmm. Help them get clear about that, keep reminding them what that is, but first of all, have the skills to be able to do it in the conversation with the customer. That's something that every salespeople can take ownership of and really focus on. So in, in, in your experience and talking about uh, you know, um, sales coaching, right? in your experience, um, obviously managers need to coach their salespeople, but do you find that salespeople enough reach out and proactively ask for coaching, ask for insights, or do you find that a lot of them kind of avoid that because maybe they think, oh, I've got it under control, or if I keep asking for help, maybe the manager's gonna think I can't do my job. Yeah, and that really gets down to one of the areas that we talk about in the conversation that, that salespeople have with themselves. And that is, the, that is this area of self-belief. Mm -hmm. And that it was our founder at Integrity Solutions, Ron Willingham, who said that people will sell to the level that they believe that they can sell to. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, that's not something that they might talk about. This is a very deeply held belief. It, it, everybody, you and me and the people who are watching this, each one of us has, have had hundreds of thousands of um, experiences throughout our lives, conversations, people we meet from from parents to teachers to to peers to to customers to everyone we meet, um, circumstances that have shaped who we are, what we do. And if mm -hmm. you could if you could take every one of those instances and put put them in a dot, I doubt it would be a circle, <laughs> but it would be something like that. Just put them around. And what we've got there inside is our what we call the area of the possible. This is who we think we are. And we all have deep inner beliefs about, this is the amount of money that I can make. This is the amount of people I can, that I can sell to, the level of people I can sell to. This is the level of people I can't sell to. This is the amount of income that I should be making. This is the amount of income that I, that I don't make, mm -hmm. and I, that I can't do. This is the where we live. This is the people I marry. This is how I look. There's the thousands of impressions that we made. And it comes down to the self-belief. So when it comes down to a salesperson saying, I want to reach out to my manager for coaching, it really comes up sometimes against people's beliefs, not only about themselves, but what they think the manager's agenda might be. Right. Yeah, I, th I, think, that's a, I think that's a critical piece. And I love that idea of, and I think people overlook it, that obviously we're the sum of our experiences, right? And that you... It's probably unlikely that you can, if you're a salesperson, that if you are lacking in confidence and belief in other areas of your life, that you're going to be able to switch it on in sales, right? It, it's, it can be done, but it's much more challenging, mm -hmm. yes. So what we're talking about is really is looking at, um, looking at, looking at yourself and just saying, you know, if I, I need to... I need to set goals and I need to be more, I need to add a little more drive into what I do, maybe what I do in all areas, but certainly in, in sales, like add that extra level of belief. I mean, because sometimes in sales, let's face it, belief is all you have, right? <laughs> it depends on, yeah, it depends on your product. Yeah. And, uh, but, but sometimes there is, there is that, there is that aspect. And it could be the flip, you know, mm -hmm. flip side. It's, it, there could be sometimes I have no belief, but I've got a really good product. So <laughs> exactly. There, there certainly is, is that aspect as mm -hmm. well. But, you know, so what, when we work with organizations and, and with people to help them in this area, it is about setting goals just outside mm -hmm. the area of the possible, just outside the, their comfort zone. And not just saying, okay, go for it, you're on your own, but over a period of time, work with people so that they start to see successes. Mm -hmm. We work in small group areas, so they start, we have celebrations on people who take a, take a step outside their comfort zone, try something different with a customer, right. maybe call on a level they've never done before, ask a deeper level question, and then come back and tell us what happened mm -hmm. 
in a group setting, get that level of support and get that celebration, confidence grows, self-belief grows, and that area of the possible we talked about starts to expand. Right. Um, and But it doesn't happen one or two days. It certainly doesn't. It's very challenging to do online. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes that human interaction. That's, right. that's really critical. And that's the role of the coach, the role of the training organization, and the role of the culture of the organization as well. So in, in the last few minutes as we wrap up here, what are some of the, just a couple of small nuggets of advice that you would give a salesperson? Like when we're talking about, you know, setting goals for yourself or believing what you, you, you can achieve. I always remember, I read somewhere that, you know, Jim Carrey, the actor. Yeah. Right, when he was struggling, he, he took out his checkbook, right? And he wrote himself, he wrote Jim Carrey, a million dollar check, right? And he put it in his wallet and he said, one day somebody's going to pay me a million dollars, you know, hire me because he's going to give me a million dollar check. And he carried that million dollar check around in his wallet until that day happened. Mm -hmm. So what are some what are some of the things that you say you could say to salespeople? Just a couple of practical things. Here are some ways you can today start changing your destiny, if you like. Yeah. Um, and it goes back to three practical things around those three conversations. Mm -hmm. Number one. Work on your skills so you can create clarity for your customers right. because that's what they're screaming for. So if go to your manager, ask for some help, go to your peers, go to your top performing salesperson, find out what they're doing, read a book, get training, do something, but work on your own personal skills mm -hmm. around that one area. Um, number two would be identify why are you do why are you in this business? And it's not just to make quota it's not just to make money all those things are very important mm -hmm. but what what's the your real sense of purpose here why are you selling what you sell to these people how are you making the world a better place and, and often in sales we don't think about that as much because we're so wrapped into the, the day sure. day business why are we doing what we're doing and find that inner purpose there and if that purpose it doesn't light your fire, no matter how hard you try. Get some coaching from people who might be able to help you. But if, you don't, if it's not there, then maybe this is not the product for you or the solution. <laughs> maybe there's something else out there you've got a passion about where your selling skills can be applied. Third area is realize that your manager, and I won't say this about every manager because of course <laughs> exceptions, but your manager is there for you to be successful. So mm -hmm. use her, use him, reach out, say, I want help. Um, don't put those walls up to say that every time she or he asks about, wants to talk to you about an account or about a pipeline or about how things are going, that it's they're somehow trying to, 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 to make you fail or somehow try to interrogate you. They're there to make you successful. Realize that and reach out to them and do that today. Do some, one, one way to reach out to your manager and ask for help um, and do it today once you've been watching this. Yeah, I love it. Um, it's been great catching up with you, Bruce. So um, please tell the, the viewers, listeners a little bit more about you and about integrity and how they can find out more. Yes, yeah, so my, my name is again Bruce Wedderburn. I'm a Chief Sales Officer of Integrity Solutions. Uh, we focus on three areas, sales, customer service and coaching to help our client organizations win more customers, keep more customers and grow their profitable revenue base. Uh, and we do that through those three areas. Um, we would love to talk to you. If you're an organization who's saying we're not getting what we need from our sales team um, in terms of performance or our customer service team or from our customers, then um, we would love to talk to you. And maybe we're a good fit for you. Maybe we're not. But uh, we could certainly brainstorm some ideas and give you some things to work on. And how can they contact you? They can reach out through our website, which is www.integritysolutions.com. That's integritysolutions.com. All right. Listen, thanks, Bruce, again. Bruce Wedderburn from Integrity Solutions. Bruce does uh, almost as good an Australian accent as I do an Irish accent. Um, it's all put on, obviously. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> bo we're both it. really from Jersey. Yeah, exactly. But we like to give it an international flavor. That's right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks, good Bruce. Good to talk to you, John. Yeah, you too. Bye now.